That's got to be the Great Temple Mound. It's freaking huge. Wow. Hey everybody, here we are at the uh, Okamogee Indian Mounds. And uh, we just pulled in and there's some, some historical markers, so we're going to check those out. First of all, we have the Dunlap House, which is I guess over there. The only two battles fought at Macon took place here. Twice the Federals attacked Macon, implant the Federals, implanting their cannon on this farm, and twice they were repulsed. In the first attack under General Stoneman on July 30th, 1864, they shelled Macon from 10 a.m. until late in the afternoon. The residence of Mrs. Dunlap was occupied by the Federals, who tore down, what is the Federals? You mean like the Americans? who tore down her stabling and erected a temporary entrenchment across her yard. The second attack was made November 20, 1864 by General Kilpatrick, who also crossed Walnut Creek and attacked from the same point. Yeah, I think they must mean Americans when they say Federals, like as opposed to the traitors in the Confederacy. Like, why don't you just say like Americans and traitors? Why don't, why don't you, weird. Battles of Dunlap Farm. On July 30th, 1864, General Stoneman with 2,500 cavalry crossed Walnut Creek and placed his cannon on a ridge on the Dunlap farm. He attacked Macon to capture the gold in the Confederate depository. Good man. To destroy the armory. Good man. Arsenal and lavatories, the bridges and railroads. <laughs> I apologize for the, uh, for the alliterate or uh, whatever, the commentary. And to free the prisoners at Camp Oglethorpe and later at Andersonville. He was unsuccessful, being forced to retreat by forces under Generals Hal Cobb and Joseph E. Johnson. These forces comprised 1,000 state militia, 600 Tennesseans, and the Home Guard, made up of old men, youths, and convalescent soldiers. Governor Brown was on the field. On November 20, 1864, Macon was again attacked by Federal Cavalry, the Americans, uh, under Brigadier General Judson, Kilpatrick from the same ridge. Confederate forces under Colonel Combs repulsed the attackers. Macon was thus saved from capture for the second time. Well, that's unfortunate. And yeah, I guess that's the Dunlap House. In 1856, Samuel S. Dunlap constructed this house as part of his 400-acre cotton plantation. The plantation was operated by 19 slaves who lived in three cabins. The Dunlap family also owned a home on High Street in the city of Macon. On July 30th, 1864, the Dunlap house was occupied by Union troops during the Battle of Dunlap Hill, part of Stoneman's raid. After the war, Captain Dunlap turned the plantation into a dairy farm. I'm not going to read the rest of this because I don't really care because I'm not really interested in the history of slave owners.
week's tip. In the late archaic period, people were just beginning to admit powdering. The first pots are very useful, but they are not strong enough to sit directly on the fire without breaking. If in your family has not learned how to make pottery bowls yet, you'll have to cook in a hollowed out slab of soapstone. Good luck in your archaic kitchen. For a kitchen utensil that lasts for centuries, try soapstone. This plentiful Georgia rock, steatite, can be shaped or hollowed out fairly easily, and Georgia soapstone bowls were a popular archaic trade item across the southeast 3,500 years ago. Archaic families used soapstone bowls for cooking, eating, and storing foods. The oldest pottery known in North America was created during the late archaic period, about 100 miles from here on the Savannah River. Archaeologists found some of this type made with clay, Spanish moss, and sand in several locales near the Okamogi Mountains. It's crazy.
So these are our trenches. You won't be able to see anything on the GoPro, but that's probably 15 feet down. That's probably also 15 feet down. If I got down there, you could stack two of me on top of each other before I'd reach the top. That's the funeral mound off in the distance. From this perspective, it looks decently tall. And this is actually the theater mound right here that we're looking at. It's almost, it's kind of concave in the center. On this big bridge that's going over some railroad tracks. If you can even sound them. I guess this is so you can't jump. Man, don't you just want to get on those tracks and start walking stand by me style? That's got to be the Great Temple Mound. It's freaking huge. Yeah. I told you it's nine stories tall. So we learned in the film that we called these people the Creek Indians, but they called themselves the Muscogee. So we've taken a detour and we are walking to what we think is the Southeast Mound. So we've really only seen the Cornfield Mound and we're not gonna see the McDougal Mound, I don't think, because that was down a separate trail that was a dead end to that and you didn't get to see anything else. And I don't think we wanted to walk that far. I just come up out of the trail. There's our great temple mound to the left of us, which we haven't gone to yet. And then right behind this tree is our southeastern mound, which is definitely not as impressive. You know, I mean, they're impressive, right? I mean, you know, you build a hill with buckets of dirt that you dug up. You build a hill that big and see how long it takes you and your compadres. But still, not the southeast mound. This is the funeral mound. I got turned around and then obviously we got the greater temple mound and the lesser temple mound which is going to be fun to walk up yeah this is absolutely definitely the funeral mound funeral mound of the mississippians okay we got our lesser temper mound temp temper lesser temple mound on the left the old lady was saying you don't think that's one over there and they cut it they cut through one to build the road kind of looks like it but I'm gonna guess not. Even so, they're not gonna tell us, right? So yeah, we're walking up a pretty, pretty steep incline here. Not that you could tell on GoPro. I mean, the greater one right ahead of us, that's supposed to be nine stories tall, over 55 feet. Well, I can't tell that either from this GoPro angle. Yeah, even the lesser Temple Mound. Well, you wouldn't know though, necessarily. If you were just coming along on horseback or wagon back in the day or whatever, and you see him, you're like, oh, there's some weird hills. There's some weird, oddly shaped hills. My legs right the f out. So here we are on top of the Lesser Temple Mound. All right, we're about to climb on top of this monster. We're about to go on top of the Great Temple Mound. We're totally going to be in violation of the of the. Uh, the medicine man, I don't know, they weren't medicine man, whatever they were, the, the ritual chiefs. Oh my goodness, this is so very cool. Oh, so this is just recap of, uh, of our film and everything that was on the walls in there. Most of which, I didn't get on camera because there were so many people in there, it was worthless to read and narrate. 
All right, let's go mound, mound climbing. Oh yeah, there's another trail all down through there. Oh yeah, some steep slopes, man. No, I cannot. Big nine. Man, that's good for bad knees. Whew. And the, the back of your legs and all those things. Yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to go to the gym today. Wow, making skyline and everything. Crazy. Wow. Detailed in there. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's so short. This is crazy. This is so short. 